So hello and welcome to one of the most capped Manchester United players of all time in the top 10 of appearances, 529 for the Reds, multiple trophies too. Dennis, always great to speak to you. How have you been coping during lockdown? Well, basically just doing a few jobs around the house. So you're in the garden. I mean, the weather's been, been great, but it's strange times. You know, the health of everybody is the most important thing. But um, you're missing sport enormously. Yeah, missing sport, missing United, missing going to Old Trafford and, and watching the Reds play. Uh, I bet you can't wait to see that back, see football back and sport back in general, I guess. Well, hopefully, I mean, it's going to take a while, I guess, but the sooner we do it, the better. You know, I mean, it's, uh, as I said, strange times, not just in sport, but for everybody involved, you know, get, not getting out to be able to see some friends and all that. So it's a, it's a time we just have to grit our way through it, I suppose, and, and hopefully better times ahead. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but we do like to keep in touch with all of our fans and yep. for them um, unique insights into uh, our legends' lives. And you've picked out three shirts uh, for us to have a look at uh, and tell us a bit of a story behind them all. So let's begin with shirt number one, which is from the 93-94 season. Yeah. And a fantastic game against Liverpool. So um, tell us a little, about, a little bit about that shirt and the game itself. Well, I mean, it's the biggest game of the season. I mean, it was a great year for us anyway, 93-94. It was our, our first double. Um, but going to Anfield w was always the toughest test. Um, there weren't a fantastic team back then. But, you know, the, uh, we, we were rivaling with the likes of Blackburn Rovers and, and Newcastle were coming on the scene and, and Arsenal were always there, of course. But um, it was always our toughest test. And I used to love going there. Um, but this black shirt, I mean, it's iconic. It's my favourite shirt. I think it's a lot of, a lot of ex players' favourite shirts and a lot of fans' yeah. favourite shirt. And to go to Liverpool and and even though we went three up, Sully, they came back to draw three three. But it, it was a tremendous game. We should have won by by three or four on the night. We were fantastic. Um, but yeah, great memories. Great memories in, in in this black shirt. Yeah, what a game. Um, in the game, you took the lead. Steve Bruce got a header from Eric yeah. Cantona cross. Um, and that was after four minutes. The perfect start at Anfield. Then Giggsy doubled the lead, robbed Mark Wright, didn't he? Yeah. And put that beautiful Little chip, chip. On Bruce Grobler. What a goal that was. And then um, your uh, stunning free kick, Dennis. Talk us through it. I think Roy King got fouled by um, Razor Ruddock, and then you stepped up to take the free kick. So talk us through the scenario. Well, the scenario is, I think when you go to Anfield, you have to start quick because you know they're going to come at you. It's a tight ground. Um, it always feels like a, a small pitch because of the way they play and pressure. And they're no different now. But, um, you know, we got off to a great start, as you said. Bruce is scoring after four minutes. Giggs is great chip over Grobler. And, um, you know, we got a free kick just outside the box. It's perfect distance for me, i got to say that. It's, it's at the good side for me as well. Good side for a right footer. Um, and the unbelievable thing is, if you watch it on, on TV, there's actually none of our players on the, in the box. Well, this is incredible. I think that's the first time we've ever seen a free kick given from outside the box, and United don't have a player in there. Owen, it's Trey! And everything they hit ends up in the back of the net. Uh, so they must have had good confidence in me, I don't know, but it's one of the sweetest strikes I've ever hit. It's gone right in the top corner. And then... Um, it's the best place in the world to score, you know, against your, your biggest rivals and all that. And to put us three off, what a great start that was. But, uh, yeah, a, a great night and we had a great following there as well. Yeah, it was a stunning free kick, right in the top bin. Yeah. Grubler, absolutely no chance. That's a technique and a skill you practised a lot, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think, and you could ask players this, players and ex-players, that it's kind of a, a natural talent. There's not there's not that many players can actually um, uh, get the ball over the over the wall and get it to dip, uh, and particularly in this day and age where the balls are are a lot lighter. But um, we used to always practice free kicks. You know, Eric used to take a few crick, few few. Um, Eric um, Giggsy did, and um, one or two other players used to think that used to try uh, be able to take free kicks. But uh, we used to have a bit of a laugh and shooting after training and all that. But of course, it's deadly serious because you are practicing, and you just get comfortable with your your own technique and it's all about confidence to be fair Sully and I was full of confidence we were two up and as I said it's uh, it's one of the sweetest strikes I've ever hit uh, with a free kick it, it's gone right in the top corner right in front of our fans as well at Anfield 
uh, to put us three up. And it was a, a great moment in my career. You probably would have had a lot more opportunities to take free kicks had David Beckham not yeah, come along yeah. and uh, decided that he wanted to take them all. Uh, but in, in that game specifically, so yeah, 3 0 up, then they get two back before half time. Nigel Clough yeah. from distance, uh, and then Clough again on the edge of the box. Keen and Brucey got in a bit of a muddle. Yeah. So then you're 3 2 at half time after having a 3 0 lead. I mean, can you remember what you were all feeling then? Well, I, I, I had a guess. I can't remember offhand, but I would have guessed we would have felt a little bit down the fact that we've gone three up and then and then conceded two. Um, whereas otherwise, you'd be elated to be a goal up at, at Anfield. Um, we'd missed a couple of opportunities as well. I think we missed an opportunity to go four up, actually, before they, they struck back. But listen, we were a very attacking team at the time. We always thought there was more goals on us, so we would have been fairly confident at a half-time. Yeah, just saying that in that second half, the only goal was scored by Liverpool... Late on, yeah. Um, yeah, Ruddock's had a late on, and um, they managed to salvage a point out of it, which was disappointing. Ordinarily, you'd say go to Anfield, take a point. It's an okay result, but you'd have been gutted then, I'm guessing. Ah, uh, we were, we were, because we played so well as well. Even though they, they pegged us back three three, we felt we fully deserved to win by by more than two or three goals. Um, I think Robler made some great saves that night. We missed one yeah. or two opportunities. Um, and I think basically they scored with, with probably three of the chances that they had. So it was a huge disappointment that we'd gone to Anfield and, and played so well, and uh, obviously managed just to come out come out of there with a point. As I said, it's it's always been the toughest place for us to go. Um, I think you can say that now, our biggest rivals, uh, and to go three up at Anfield with an opportunity to to kick on from there was was an opportunity lost, I suppose. But uh, yeah. listen. Uh, things happen. It's a long time ago now. It was 26 years ago. Can you believe that? Well, uh, fond memories. It was a great year for us. It really was. Yeah, I can remember it well. I was watching at um, a friend's house, a Liverpool supporter, um, with his dad as well. And when you scored the third goal, I jumped up, punched the air, punched his glass lampshade. And <laughs> all the panels fell down and smashed all over his floor. I wasn't invited Brilliant. back after that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, despite you not winning the game, you've kept that shirt. It's one yeah. of your most treasured shirts like you said it's your favorite shirt and it is a fantastic looking shirt it is i mean i mean obviously red's red and you know when we when we play at home we always play in red and and we have had numerous away shirts over the years and all all col- all all colors and all shapes and whatever but i think it's an iconic shirt it really is it's it stands out i think i think fans Love the shirt as well, and yeah. people remember it for different reasons. We we had a great night at, at Villa one night on the, playing in that shirt as well. But I I mean I I've got a few shirts here. I'm a huge majority of my main shirts are down at the museum, um, and the medals are down there as well. But I, I've hung on to this one because I, I I love it. I've got great memories for it, and it was a great night. Even though we we only drew three three in the end, and it was a huge disappointment. Uh, I still got fond memories of it. Yeah, game which is still talked about a lot today. It was so good. Um, on to your next shirt then, also from the 93-94 season. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at the shirt first, if you can, Den. That's the home shirt. Home yeah, shirt, this is a kind of an iconic shirt as well because of the, the laces in the front. Yeah. It had the collar for Eric, so he could Absolutely, wear it. collar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, what, what a season. I mean, what are your fondest memories of wearing that shirt in that terrific double winning season? Well, the year before we we won our first Premier League, and you know the club had been waiting a long, a long time for it, um, and we felt huge pressure off us, and we really kicked on from there. Um, and as I said, the season ninety three ninety four was was fantastic for us, um, and you know it, 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 it was it was we were such an attacking team, yeah, and you could nearly name the team week in week out as well with with Parks, well, Big Pete and Goal Parks as a a right full back, Brucey and Pally were a great partnership. Myself on the left, you know, Incy and Keeney in, in the middle of the park, Andre and Giggsy um, on the wings, Big Sparky up front, and, and Eric tucked in behind him. And it was a powerful team, it was a strong team. We had great backup, Robbo was still there, you know, it was, it, it, Keeney was coming in, Keeney was brilliant, obviously, just came in that season. And we were a powerful side, we were an aggressive side, Sharpie was there. Uh, we had pace with Sharpie, Giggsy, Inti, Keeney, Andre, you know, we had, with Brian McClare. We had great runners, great pace. And it was just, I thought it was a fantastic side. Not a massive squad or anything, but it was a, a, a team that could fight with anybody if they wanted to, to mix it or if you wanted, you know, we play football against the best of teams. I, I love playing on that side. I really did. 
Yeah, amazing team. I, I still think my favourite team. And you, you mentioned it wasn't a big squad. You all have to play a lot of football. People often say, oh, they play too much football these days. I was looking, you made 61 starts and made one sub-appearance, scoring four goals in that season. I mean, that's a lot of football, isn't it? People say they play too much today. You were playing just as much back then. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean the pitches as well, when you think about it. And I was... Well, it was a different kind of physicality, I suppose, and the fact that we probably didn't, I don't know if we ran as much, but certainly there was more tackles flying in. But, you know, you just, you had to be tough in those days. You played against teams like the Wimbledons and, and the Palaces, you know, and the Boltons, who were, you know, I wouldn't, you know, they were tough to play against. You went away and you, st- you didn't know, and then you came up against the Arsenals and the Forests of this world, who were great football, footballing teams. But, um, yeah, it was a great memory, great season. Of course, finished in a, in a, a double, six great days of of winning the league, and then obviously winning the the FA Cup against Chelsea. Um, yeah, it was a fantastic season. Uh, obviously, the first double for the football club. Yeah, it really was. Uh, so again, a shirt and and memories which you you'll cherish forever. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Onto your, onto your third shirt, then, yeah. um, which is. One of the most famous shirts in the in the club's history. Yeah, I mean, this this is I've got a. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is that. I mean, that's a beautiful shirt as well, and of course, it means so much to us. Yeah. Um, listen, ninety nine is obviously the the best year in the club's history, um, and the team had moved on from ninety four. Um, there was more and more games. The squads were getting bigger and bigger. The more foreigners coming into the 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 the, the the, the Premier League as a whole, but certainly at our club, the manager had made some great signings, particularly the year before in 98, um, signing of Yorkie and, and Yap and, and Jesper, um, three great signings. And we were, we were a powerful, powerful squad at that point. Um, and that season was fantastic, the way we went unbeaten in the last, I think it was 33 games of the season, you know, just before Christmas and went unbeaten the whole, the whole year. And, you know, to, you need a bit of luck, Sully, to get like because there's cup competitions in there as well, and and when you don't play at your best, sometimes that can be in, in cup games as well. And you just hope you've got enough to to get you through. Um, but just going on the FA Cup when we replays against Chelsea and Arsenal, beating Liverpool, Newcastle in the final, who were a fantastic team at the time. We, you know, we played all the top teams in that competition to win the the Champions League, the European Cup. You obviously had to beat an Italian side back then. Um, beating some land in the quarterfinals, beat a fantastic Juventus side in, in, in the semi final, of course, a really strong Bayern Munich team in the final as well. So, and we've been waiting years for that. And the league to win it on the last game of the season at home against Spurs. I think Gary Neville's gone on record and saying those 10 or 11 days as a professional footballer cannot, cannot be beat. But it was the whole, particularly the back end, the last five months of the season where we were just on a roll and we felt like we couldn't lose and we had goals in our team. We, you know, the four strikers, they all talk about Yorkie and Coley had such a good, great partnership, but how good was Teddy and how good was Oli in, in scoring goals and, and linking up? You know, Giggsy would always get you 10 plus, Bex would always get you 10 plus, Scholes would certainly get you 10 plus and Keeney in there. We were such a, a, an attack inside. It, it was a joy to play in. It really was. Yeah, wonderful team. About that shirt specifically, um, and that game specifically. So that was a build-up to a game unlike any other. We've spoken to you and your teammates before about this. What was the build-up like and why was it different? Well, it was different because I think the Premier League is, is such a physical league, Sully, that by the time you finish, you're almost done. Uh, you pegged that alongside the FA Cup and Champions League we were involved in and, and the amount of games you're playing and hence, hence it being a very squad orientated back then we needed a fantastic squad so after beating Newcastle we lit uh, sorry Spurs we literally had six days to go out and celebrate because the manager always wanted you to celebrate we had six days a couple of days celebration get that out of the way so we more or less had four days to prepare for Newcastle on the, on the Saturday and then after Newcastle we got four more days um, to prepare for, for Bayern Munich and, and what was the holy grail really because we had won the Premier League well, that was the fifth Premier League we'd won. And we were desperate to win the Champions League because it was 31 years since the club had done it. Um, and, and we were a tired team and we were missing our two best players in, in Scolzi and Roy. All the odds were against us. 
um, but just, just to dig deep. And we didn't play particularly well on the night. I think we have to accept that. And we were a little bit fortunate uh, in the fact that they hit the, the crossbar on the post. But we dug deep. We always knew that we had players that could score goals. We always knew the manager wasn't afraid of risking a little bit um, the last 15, 20 minutes of, of any game that needed to be risked. And you put all that together and we had great belief in ourselves and it was just a, a, an unbelievable night. And it was a very huge relief, I think. You know, uh, I think that's the, the first emotion. Huge relief that we'd managed to do it. But when you sit back and, and then obviously 21 years on here and you see other teams try to try to match um, what we did and, and falling short at the moment, it, it's just a great achievement. I'm very much to be part of it because we had some great players in, in that squad. We really did under a great manager. Yeah, and the most dramatic last few minutes of any game they'll ever be. And and you played your part in uh, one of the goals as well, didn't you? What, in the Champions League? Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Well, the... the, the um, With the, the ball over goal, to, to eventually... Down the line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 40 yards. Down the line, Ollie. That's just to get it down in their half, silly. Up. Well, I knew Ollie was running to the hole anyway. He always did. That's the beauty about that team. There were so many options, whether you, you came short or you want to go... You go along to somebody up the front or down the side of the channels. We, we had great options in that team, i got to say that. But uh, it was fantastic to be a part of it. It really was. And a great night. And I, I, was, I was 33 on the time. So I know I wouldn't have too many more opportunities to, to get a chance of winning the, the, the Champions League. So it was great to be part of it. It really was. You didn't consider switching shirts with a Bayern player at the end at all? No, no, I, you know what, Sully? I gave up switching certain shirts after a couple of years at United because I, I just wanted to keep my own. Um, I was never one in, in for swapping shirts. I wanted to keep my own. There was always a great demand for them back in Ireland anyway. You know, there were so many Man United fans back there. But I, I just hung on to them. Uh, very rarely swapped. Um, I was looking through a few shirts there. and There's one or two great ones I've got in, in the early years, uh, particularly when I played for Ireland. Um, I got Rob Wars when I played against played against England I thought that was going to be his last game but he actually played one more and the World Cup in 94 I actually swapped shirts with a Dutch lad called Blind so, so oh, it's not yeah. daily it's his dad Danny yeah, Danny. So, yeah so I was looking through that the other day he was a great player played for Ajax um, but yeah I wasn't one for swapping shirts I wanted to keep as, as many as I wanted to while I played and so I'm glad I did that now yeah, brilliant. Uh, and you've got an extra bonus share. We only asked you for three, but you yeah. being the legend you are, you've gone and got a fourth for us. And yeah. this wouldn't have been possible had it not been for that 99 shirt, would it, this one? Because this is well, from the Foundation um, treble reunion game. Absolutely. We all met up last last May or June, um, 20 years on from, from the 99 Champions League final against Bayern Munich. We were fortunate enough that they're a fantastic club and and they turned up as well. Um, it was an absolute unbelievable day to meet. I mean, I see a lot of ex the players around and around the area and when matches are on, but to bump into like most of the lads I've not seen for quite a while. It was a, it was a great day. It really was. It's a shame that you know one or two could. I think three, three could make a Giggsy and Roy and, and Phil Neville. Um, but it was a great day to catch up. The manager was obviously there, and I've got everybody signed it. Um, it was just a fantastic day, and there's a great camar camaraderie there. It's great, great squad, great team spirit still. So it was really fond memories. I think the crowd loved it. I think everybody loved the day. We obviously won five 0 I think we had to win, didn't we? It was as simple yeah. as that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just just a follow on from my shot from '99. Um, Twenty years later, we reunite again and and play it all over again. Great memories, Sully. Great memories. Yeah. And the class of Bayern Munich to, to absolutely support the event and raise a lot of money for charity was wonderful too. Absolutely, they're a great club. They really are, and the, the, our club are very close. So I got to say that. Yeah. Uh, great to see uh, one of the best German players of all time, Lothar Matthäus. I mean, what a legend he is. Uh, he's a fantastic player. I mean, thank God he came off in that game. I mean, yeah. he thought it was done and dusted and all that. But yeah, he. he I mean. It, Listen, the Bayern Munich are a great club. They've always had some fantastic teams. Um, the year we beat them in 99, they, they were strong. I think they won it two years later than that, actually, which I was delighted about. Um, they're always there thereabouts. Uh, and people underestimate them, but they are the, the huge team in Germany. Um, and, you know, they're very well respected, very, very well run. Um, and what they did 
coming across for 20 years because then they knew you know they were going to going to get beat probably anyway but yeah. it was a great gesture from come across and we were able to raise so much money we really were but for the Manchester United Foundation so it's a special shirt that it really is certainly it looks really good that everyone signed it as well doesn't it um, absolutely. Ben, that is absolutely fantastic for you to uh, be able to show us those shirts really appreciate your time um, what else are you going to be up to this week then? Well, I mean, we get out for walks and go for runs and try to keep fit, try to keep sane, I suppose. It's just a matter of, as I said, it, it needs to be done. Um, just need to stay in and everybody stay, stay, stay for this, this time and we'll get through it. And, and that's about it, Salute, to be fair. Yeah, perfect. Thanks for your time, Dan. Thank you. Catch you soon. Catch you soon.